Commander Gwendolyn Cross of the Government Survey Crew on Woden. We are requesting an emergency dispatch. We have three confirmed cases of Kala Aestis. Our medical module has been compromised by violent storms. We require assistance as soon as possible. Mayday. Mayday. This is Commander Gwendolyn Cross of the Government Survey Crew on Woden. We are requesting an emergency dispatch. We have three confirmed cases of Kala Aestis. Our medical module has been compromised by violent storms. We require assistance as soon as possible. Mayday. Mayday. This is Commander Gwendolyn Cross of the government serving crew. This is Stardust. Do you read me Earth Command? This is Stardust to Mir Mir Control. This is Fleet Transport Stardust to Earth Nav Control requesting a travel condition Come update. Mir Mir Command. Do you read me? This is Fleet Transport Stardust. Commander Gwendolyn Cross of the government serving crew on we have three confirmed cases of Kala Aces. The medical has been compromised by violent storms. We require assistance as soon as possible. Mayday. Mayday. This is Commander Gwendolyn Cross of the government. Commander Delhart. Sir, I think we have a situation on Woden. Come on! Let's get the CDS prepped and loaded. Space drop in 15 minutes. There is no margin of safety along the rim of a frontier. There can't be any until the way is made for those who come later. Until then, the penalty for mistakes is a grim one. The laws of physical nature operate with irrevocable certainty, with no room for mercy, kindness, or sentimentality. In space, life becomes a cold equation, and the answer is often followed by death. It sounds melodramatic, but it is the truth I know firsthand. I'm an EDS pilot. Matt Leong, 13 Productions presents Cold Equations Adapted from the short story by Tom Godwin I'm aboard the fleet transport Stardust heading to Mir Mir. To be a pilot of an emergency dispatch shuttle is not a glamorous job. I spend most trips in my bunk doing crossword puzzles and reading cheap paperback novels. To you, I'm sure it seems like a waste of money to have a pilot just sitting there, but believe it or not, it is cheaper to send me out here than to set up more supply outposts. It works. The pay is good, the benefits are great, but you don't get home much. It had been a quiet trip until I got called down to the XO's office. Come in. You sent for me, Commander? Yes. Sit down, Barton. We just got an emergency dispatch from the Territorial Space Station on Woden. Woden, uh, that's in the Crab Nebula, isn't it? That's right. There are two exploration parties there on Manning's continent, eight members each. Mm-hmm. There is an outbreak of Keleastus, and their medical habitat module was wrecked during a violent weather storm. Oh, and I thought this was going to be a nice, quiet passenger run. EDS-4 is being prepped and their payload is loaded. In 10 minutes, we will drop into normal space and launch your ship. I'm on my way. One thing, I may have buried the lead here. What's that? Woden is pretty far out, and you are at maximum payload for an EDS. We dumped any unnecessary weight and turned your ship into a flying gas can. Now I won't lie, this is going to be an incredibly dangerous mission. Woden is very valuable. The government needs this crew to complete its survey. 
it is worth hundreds of billions. Statistics ran the numbers, and figuring the weight of the medical equipment will be able to give you just enough fuel to land on Manny's continent if you can make it on the first pass. Otherwise, you'll burn up in midair. The company recognizing the importance of this planet survey and the level of risk you're facing. Upon successful completion of this run, you'll be compensated with a bonus that will equal your annual salary. Um, wow. When can I expect to be picked up? We'll make a stop on the run back to Earth sometime next year. You'll be notified. I guess I won't be making it home for Christmas. Sorry that we can't make it sooner. Uh, that's what happens when you sign up for EDS work. See you next year, Commander. Report to the launch bay. Yes, sir. Good luck, Bart. Down in the belly of the Stardust, the crew was working frantically to get the emergency dispatch ship prepped. Mechanics and technicians swarmed all over the bay. Nine minutes later, the course was plotted, the medical equipment was stowed in the hold, and EDS-4 Gamma-3 was ready to be launched into space. Airlock sealed. Cabin pressurized. EDS startup sequence engaged. Pre-flight checklist completed. All systems nominal. McGuffin drive pre-flight diagnostic complete. Beginning drive priming sequence. Martin? Yes, sir. Launch bay personnel has been cleared. 30 seconds of drop. All set. All lights are green. 20 seconds. Launch bay has been depressurized. Lock open. 15 seconds. Engage MacGuffin Drive. MacGuffin Drive is a go. 10 seconds. Detach umbilical. Umbilical detach. 5 seconds. 4, 3, 2, 1, drop. I don't remember how much time had passed until I noticed that something was off. It had been an hour, maybe two. Playing video file, hi mom from Jay Barton. Timestamp, August 8th, 2179, 1624 CST. Hey mom, um, okay, so there's a Pennsylvania uh, doubleheader over there. I can hardly spot it at all. Well, I could get the engine in the tender, but Video playback paused. A temperature variation in the hold? The onboard sensors registered a second heat signature, and it was coming from the cargo bay. All right, come out. Whoever, whatever you are, if you don't come out in five seconds, you're gonna get shot. One, two, Hello, uh, please, don't shoot me. I surrender. I'm Martin. Martin Lee Cross, your prisoner. What are you doing in there? Uh, I stowed away. Oh, no. No, no, no. What? Do I have to pay a fine or something? What are you doing here? I need a ride. I'm, I'm trying to get to my wife. Who's your wife? She's with the government survey crew on Woden. I haven't seen her since she left Earth a year ago. Okay, but what made you hide in my EDS? I was a passenger on the Stardust. I have a job on Mirmir, Mir, but I heard you were going to Woden, and it looked like they had plenty of room in the cargo hold, so I hid. I figured I'd be breaking some kind of rule, but hey, what's one rule? What's one rule? Hey, genius, how about this math problem? F is the amount of fuel that will power an EDS with a mass of M safely to its destination. F amount of fuel will not power an EDS with a mass of M plus our passenger X safely to its destination. How could he be expected to know? He was 5'8 with brown hair and this stupid look on his face. Right now he has no idea that this equation will have to be balanced. You. Sit down there. 
This is Barton, emergency dispatch pilot 4 Gamma 3 to Stardust. Stardust here. We read you, EDS. Go ahead. Give me Commander Delhart. What's the message, EDS? I need to consult Commander Delhart. The commander is busy. Listen here, Squirt. Give me Commander Delhart. One moment. This is Delhart. What is it? Sir, at 0800 hours, I discovered a stowaway aboard my ship. A stowaway? Yes, sir. Barton, what's going on? Sir, he's a kid. Barely an adult. Oh? He wanted to see his wife on Woden. He didn't realize what he was doing. I see. I wondered, sir, maybe the cruiser could, uh, change course or something. I'm afraid not. We're hundreds of light years away. We have limited fuel supply and 900 passengers- Is there any chance? No. Understood, Skipper. Contact records and log the information. Yes, sir. And Barton? Skipper? Sorry. Yeah. Sure. Barton out. You cut our acceleration? I did. Why? Uh, to save fuel for a while. How did you manage to stow away? Well, back in the Stardust, I was taking a language lesson in Mimi Rees, and I overheard the order come in for your ship, so I wandered down to the launch bay and found an inspection core white coat just draped over a chair. I put on the white coat, grabbed a clipboard, and slipped on board pretending to check some gauges. It was surprisingly easy. But hey, I'll be a model prisoner. I promise. Space Scout's honor. Ugh, if only you were a thief or a spy, it would make it easier. Make what easier? Forget it. Why couldn't he have been somebody with some ulterior motive? A fugitive hoping to lose himself in a raw new world or a crackpot with a mission? Why did he have to be this grinning idiot? Stardust to EDS 4 Gamma 3. Barton here, go ahead. 4 Gamma 3, we need an ID for the stowaway. Give me your identification card, Mr. Cross. Here. Why? It's for the ship's records. Identification number Tango 8374. One moment, this is for the gray card? Yes. I'll need the time of- I'll call back later. Uh, that's highly irregular. Then we'll do it in a highly irregular manner. The person in question is listening to everything that's being said. Are you capable of understanding that? Oh, uh, please proceed, 4 Gamma 3. ID number Tango 8374-Yankee 54. Name, Martin Lee Cross. Male, married, born, July 7th, 2160. Good lord, you're barely 20. You are still a kid. Height, 1.72 meters tall. Weight, 81.6 kilos. Hair, brown. Eyes, blue. Ethnicity, Caucasian. Blood type, O. Listen, I'll call you back later. Look, Martin, I don't know if you appreciate what you've gotten yourself into. It's like this. This ship is carrying critical medical equipment to the survey group on Woden. Okay. Their medical habitat module was wrecked in a storm. The colony is infected with cholaestis, which is fatal unless proper treatment is given in the first 48 hours. This EDS shuttle has exactly enough fuel to reach its destination. If you stay aboard, your added weight will cause it to use up all the fuel before it lands. Oh. What happens then? We crash. You die. I die. The infected six team members on Woden die. Can't they send another ship to meet us? There are no ships to send. Well, I... Oh. No. No, no. You... You you can't do that. It is how it has to be. But that's crazy. I haven't done anything. I haven't hurt anybody. I'm sorry. I would have told you before, but I wanted to make sure there was no other option. You mean it? You're going to make me leave this ship. That's how it is. But I'll die. My lungs will explode and freeze. Try to understand. I do understand. You're going to kill me, and I didn't do anything. I know you didn't. That has nothing to do with it. It has everything to do with it. Nobody should die like that for no reason. What if we unbolted some seat or some non-essential system? What about the toilet? 
Is there a toilet we can eject? The interior of an EDS is basically one large molded hex carbon fiber sleeve. It would take an industrial grade plasma cutter, which we don't have, to remove that chair from the floor. What about a pressure suit? What if I put on a pressure suit, I'll let myself out, I'll do a little space walk, you know, and I'll just hang out and you can call for someone to pick me up. We don't have any pressure suits. What kind of spaceship doesn't have space suits? In case of catastrophic engine failure, the cockpit detaches from the ship and serves as a lifeboat. It is a measure they came up with to cut down on cost and weight. Oh, listen. Um, maybe there are other cruisers out there. Cruisers you don't know about. Maybe you could radio. Maybe it- Now listen to me, Martin. It's different here. It is different from anything you've ever known. On Woden, there are 16 people. 16 human beings on that entire world fighting an unforgiving alien environment. Out here, you can only make a mistake once. And I made a mistake. Yes. And there's no hope of? Absolutely none. You will have to be put out of the ship. What's wrong? I can't breathe. You're hyperventilating. Put your head between your legs. I'm going to die. Oh, what the hell? What did I do to deserve this? This is crap. This is bull. And you know what? The woman I did all this for, I'm never going to see her again. But hey, maybe she'll see my frozen, bloated corpse floating outside the window as she flies back to Earth. But what do you care? You're just another rocket jack delivery girl. Hey, this is a bad situation. You made your choice. You knew what you were risking when you boarded this ship. There are 16 lives, including your wife's on the line. 17, including mine. So don't take this out on me. So. So. How about some music? Yeah. That'd be great.
He sat on the floor with the curve of the ship's hull to his back, and I watched all hope drain out of him. With the absence of hope, there goes the fear, and then the resignation. He needed time, but there was so little left. EDS? Stardust to EDS. Need pertinent data. Roger, Stardust. When do you expect to complete your report? Later. I need a diagnostic check, a verification for my flight plan, and the G-fold model for descent. I'm intersecting course vector 7.3 at 0831. Deceleration, 1750. Weight, 1 ton. I would like to stay at 0.10 as long as I can. I wait as the new factors are fed into the maw of the quantum neural processors and the electrical impulses are coded and then determined with utter precision of how long the pale kid beside me would have to live. Your systems read 5x5. Five five. You will resume deceleration at 1910. <sighs> That's what I got. Thank you, 4 gamma 3 out. It is 1810. One hour. He has one hour to live. One hour? That's it. If this happened back on Earth, a thousand ships would fill the sky. The whole world would know about it. They'd do everything to save me. This isn't Earth. We had such big dreams. The house, the 2.5 kids, maybe a cat. Then we realized that they were just dreams. Gwen and I separated over a year ago. We were young and stupid, got married right out of high school. She enlisted, and all through command school, it was fine. It was great, right up until she got promoted. I was going to see her. I was going to fix it. I was going to make everything all right. Are you married? I was. Oh. She ran off with someone in the weather service. Do you still think about her? I don't let myself. Where is she? Back on Earth. Kids? A boy. Look, if you don't mind, I'd rather talk about something else. Okay. Uh, what do you talk about when you've got an hour to live? What do you want to talk about? What's Gwen like? Gwen? Oh. She's funny. She made me laugh all the time, even when she was trying to annoy me. When she found out, I mean, you see, there was another girl. Gwen, she was away a lot for training and missions. I was lonely. When she found out, she looked at me with this mix of shock and hate. She yelled and screamed and called me horrible things. I deserved all of it. She packed a bag and gave me the finger as she stormed out the front door. Um, I haven't seen her since. I should have gone after her, but I, I didn't know what to say. I had no idea where to start. And now? I haven't stopped thinking about her. So, when I heard the ship was bound for Woden and I knew Gwen was there, I, I had to take that chance. Martin had violated a man-made law. The penalty was not of man's making or desire. It was not a penalty men could revoke. F, amount of fuel, will power an EDS with a mass of M safely to its destination. The time was 1830. 40 minutes. It was beginning to get me. Space is a savage place, and in my tenure I have seen a hundred people die. This was different. I watched him as he wrote a message for his parents, and one for Gwen. I watched him as he fought his way through the black horror of fear toward the calm gray of acceptance. And then there it was on the screen, the planet Woden, a red ball enshrouded in the blue haze of its atmosphere, swimming in space against the background of star-sprinkled blackness. The chronometer on my display said 1845. Listen, we're in comm range of Woden now. I mean, would you want me to try to contact your wife? Really? It would mean she would know what is going to happen. There is nothing anyone can do. Yes. I would like to talk to her. She deserves to know. 
Hello. Hello, Woden? EDS 4 Gamma 3 to Woden Government Survey Group. Can you hear me? Come in, Woden. They may not be monitoring. Hello? Copy? Hello? Hello? Identify yourself, please. This is the Government Survey Group 1 on Woden. This is Barton, pilot of EDS 4 Gamma 3. Do you have the medical supplies? Yes. How bad is it? Six are infected. One man died last night. How long till you land? I start deceleration at 1910 hours. I should make touchdown by 1930. Thank God. I'm looking for Gwen Cross. She isn't here. She's out with a survey team. Well, when do you expect her to return? I can't say. I can try to get through to her, but the weather's playing hell with our communications. All right. If Commander Cross comes back before we lose contact, will you have her buzz me? It's urgent. Okay, EDS. I'll keep the channel open. Check. The minutes passed like small bits of eternity. On the screen, I could see Manning's continent sprawled like a gigantic hourglass in the eastern sea. There was a thin line of shadow where it was beginning to disappear as the planet turned on its axis. I looked at this sad, pale kid next to me, and I thought of a woman long ago who'd sat next to me crying because I wouldn't try to understand. What had he written in those letters for back home? What would they think of the faceless, unknown pilot who'd sent him to his death? What would I think of myself? alone at night, reliving this voyage. Are you cold? I'll turn up the heat. Anything from Gwen? Not yet. Maybe it's better. I mean, what if this was happening to you and your wife tried to call you? How would you feel? I don't know. Do you ever hear from her? I got a letter about a year ago. I tore it up. That was foolish. A handwritten letter. You don't see many of those. Those take a lot of effort. It was pretty foolish. Life is so terribly short to be wandering around alone. Well, I... I wait a second, we're getting something. How much time do we have? About five minutes. Hello, EDS. Hello. EDS, four game of three. Come in. Come in. EDS here. I have Commander Cross. All right, go ahead. Hello? This is Commander Cross. Gwen Cross? Yes. I have someone for you. Go ahead. Hello? Gwen? Hello? Gwen? Who is it? It's Martin. Martin? I wanted to see you again. I stowed away on an EDS. You uh, what? But Martin... It doesn't matter. Gwen... I want you to know, I'm sorry. Oh, it's been so long, I, I can't believe it. I thought I'd see you again, but now, Gwen, you don't hate me, do you? Hate you? Oh, Martin, I've never stopped loving you. Not even for an instant. Gwen. Now the transmission's breaking up, Martin. I've got to see you, there's got to be some way. There isn't. Move over. Hello? Pilot, have you called your mothership? Did you have them double check the G fold model? I've done everything. You've been on the frontier long enough to know how an EDS runs. Dear God, there must be something. Some way. Do you think I'd let this happen if I wasn't sure? She tried to help me. Gwen, she tried. It really doesn't matter. I'm not frightened anymore. Not now. I don't understand. I was going to Miramir for a job. I was just going because I'd be closer to where you are, Gwen. All this time. Don't. Let me tell you something, Martin. I've always known you'd come back to me. I've known it every minute. It's what kept me alive. I want you to hold that into your mind. Gwen? I... I can't hear you. Gwen! Just know how I feel. I do. It's fading. I'll try and boost the signal. There's so many things left to say. Gwen, if you can still hear me, I'll come see you again. Maybe it'll be in your dreams, or be the touch of a breeze, or even one of those golden-winged little birds singing my head off. Maybe I'll be nothing you can see or hear. You'll know I'm there. Think of me like that. 
Gwen. Goodbye. Goodbye. My darling. He sat motionless in the hush that followed, and then he looked at me. Now? It's time. Warning, airlock safety override engaged. Docking sensors and pressure equalization protocols deactivated. I pulled down the black lever and the inner door of the airlock slid open. He walked with his head up. Martin stepped into the lock and turned to face me. I'm ready. Hey, Barton. You have a first name? Elise. Nice to meet you, Elise. It has been good to meet you, Martin. I pulled the red lever. There was a slight waver as the air gushed out. Then there was nothing. As I sat back at my controls to prepare for landing, I saw the ship's sensors registered only one heat signature. The cold equation had been balanced, and I was alone. The cast was Cara Miller as Barton, Reginald Garth as Commander Delhart, Mike Jones as the Flight Deck Commander, Jack Hobbs as Barton's son, Ernie Loughbury as Martin Lee Cross, Jeff Eldon as the Communications Officer, Brian Nelson as the Records Officer, Dan Nichols as the Statistics Officer, Brian Spath as Survey Team Comms Officer, and Jenny Heisinger as Commander Gwendolyn Cross. Additional voices provided by Emily Leon, Melissa Richter, Jordan Viviano, and William Gilbert. The script editors are Emily Leon, Cara Miller, and Melissa Richter. The music played in this program is Watercolor by Alastair Cooper from freemusicarchive.org under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Non-Derivatives 4.0 license. On Questions of Responsibility, Act 2 by Lloyd Rogers as public domain from the freemusicarchive.org. Masks by James William Hindle is licensed under an attribution non-commercial 3.0 international license. Oscars Missing by Scott Holmes and Counter Tuscany by Evgeny Taylor are licensed under an attribution non-commercial license. Lost Time by Kevin MacLeod of incompetech.com licensed under Creative Commons by attribution 3.0 license. Some sound effects and components of sounds are acquired through freesound.org. And I am Antonia Minette, your announcer. Thank you for listening.